choose your paper. You can use magazines, construction, uh, scrap paper, newspaper, really anything you have. You're gonna choose the prettiest side of the paper you've got and actually flip it over. So this is the part where we fold our papers into long strips that make up our bowls, cups, or goblets, or whatever you wanna make. I start by folding the very tip of the corner over. I did about two centimeters for my piece, but you're gonna decide how thick uh, you want each piece from this very first fold. So you wanna determine how thick you kinda want your final puck to be, and I'll explain that in a minute. So you're gonna keep folding it over and pressing about that same width. I want it, the strip to be even on both ends all the way along, so I often stop to check by comparing it to the other piece that I've already folded. Um, and then you just keep folding and pressing, and folding and pressing until you get to the very end of your piece. So the final step on each strip that we make is to secure that end right on there. So we do that by really making sure the edges are crisp, folding the tip just over, grabbing just a teensy little piece of tape and securing it down there. That makes sure that our strips of paper don't fall apart as we're coiling them around to make our pucks. Um, and I wanna show you that on this piece, if you notice there's these lines, my piece of paper had a border and it makes this really cool pattern along the edge of my paper and it'll look really nice in the final product. So for the bowl that I made, I ended up using about, I think about 13 to 14 strips of paper. Uh, and it totally depends on how big or how little you want your bowl to be. So fold away, my friends. So I keep calling it a puck because our after we coil it all together, it's going to look kind of like this hockey puck. Okay, so now I'm going to begin coiling my paper strips. This is called the core of our puck of paper. So I want to start by just folding the very, very end over and I just keep rolling it and rolling it and rolling it on itself. This part must be really, really tight and it's probably the hardest part of the whole bowl. Uh, we want to make sure that it's nice and strong and um, and coiled as tightly as possible. Your fingers are gonna get sore, but I promise it's gonna be worth it in the end. So I keep going and going and going until my paper is all coiled up. But sometimes you're gonna notice that your paper gets kind of twisted towards the end as you roll. Not a problemo. You are just gonna kind of manipulate and shape the paper with your fingers on however you want it and just flatten it out and make a new path for your paper to continue to coil. Okay, so just make sure that it's nice and tight in this part. I like to kind of hold both of my fingers on either side there so I don't lose it but sometimes you guys you drop it and it comes unraveled but that's okay we persevere and uh, continue going and it's worth it in the end i don't want it to stick out like this okay so i want you to make sure at this point that it's nice and flat then you're going to grab your tape and take the little end tail of your paper strip and make sure that it's stuck right down on that inner core Okay, so it's time to grow this baby bigger. Uh, we take our inner core of our puck and our next strip. We're going to want to get some more tape to secure that strip to our core. We just taper right on, put the tape on your strip, tape your strip to your core, 
and I don't know what's with my weird accents today and you just wrap it around remember try to keep it as tight as you can if you drop it and it becomes unraveled you just keep rolling it and making sure that it's nice and tight get ready for a hand cramp in three two one oh shake it out shake it out Hot tip, if you're finding your paper is really tough to roll and coil, roll it along, pull it along the edge of your table or surface, and it'll make it a lot easier to bend. So I just keep building on more and more pieces, taping each piece together as I go, and coiling it until I get to the size. Oh, Potato Head Woody, nice to see you here, and Lego Bike Guy. Anyways, you decide how big you want your shape to be. But this one ended up being about four inches in diameter. So I was pretty happy with that. Uh, I decided I wanted to stop there. So I used some tape on the tail, on my final tail, taped it to the edge of my puck, and voila, I have the final puck. So now we get to start shaping it into a bowl or cup or whatever you're making. So I just very gently push the rings out towards the middle. So you don't want to go too hard or you're going to push it right out and it's going kind to of come all unraveled. But if it does, that's okay. You just take the, the last piece of tape off and recoil it. But you don't really want to do that. Make sure your bottom is kind of flat because if you don't have a flat bottom and you push it out too far, check it, it's not going to stand. This would be a nice lid. You could make a lid for another piece this way, but you wanna make sure that your bottom of your bowl is nice and flat so it stands up like that. All right, this step is optional. If you have Mod Podge, it's awesome, but you don't need it. If you have white glue, that's even awesome too. Uh, I took a little bit of white glue. I added it to the bottom of the container. I added some water and mixed it up nice and smooth. Kind of the texture of uh, like a runny icing. Um, and you're gonna wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth, nice and mixed up. If it's too runny, you can always add more glue like I had to do and mix it up really, really well and then grab your paintbrush and paint it onto your shape. I started on the bottom. Uh, you can start on the inside if you like as well. So first start with one side. I also did that with the Mod Podge, which is a nice one-stop shop for uh, a nice coating and I painted all the outside then I let it dry once those had dried I wanted to paint the inside hey if you don't have a paintbrush you can use your finger too just the white glue make sure you wash your hands after so I painted the inside of both and let them dry overnight and guys there is my beautiful finished piece so they don't really hold liquid but you can hold your treasures and I love it I hope you guys have the most fun and I'm dying to see the pictures of what you create.